Uh, this afternoon, I want to talk about uh, art and activism uh, with the subtitle of uh, the artistic fight against indigenous invisibility. This piece is called Honor. Uh, I'm using an old illustration from a children's book from the 1950s, um, coupled with uh, an image of a contemporary native person, uh, which raises a number of questions about what is Indian, what does an Indian look like. For me comes the representation of indigenous people um, with the mix of popular culture and uh, what that identity ultimately means. Oftentimes um, we are left as a relic, uh, people that existed one time and that no longer exist anymore, which I'm standing here telling you this is not true. Our modern existence is one that is a constant struggle. Not only are we still here, but that we live in the same spaces that you do and oftentimes even like the same things that you do um, because we are members of our tribal community, but we're also having an American experience. And in that American experience, um, I can hold, uphold my tribal traditions and ceremony. Um, I can also like Kendrick Lamar. One of the pieces at the forefront of the uh, mascot debate was this. Um, which, when I first made this, is an incredibly difficult piece. It's incredibly difficult because there is a use of racial slurs um, and stereotypes that are being used uh, to make a point, which I'm not generally a fan of. It says American genocide reconciled through football. I'm essentially making fun of the idea that uh, mascots honor Native Americans is somehow uh, hundreds of years of overt oppression and forced assimilation comes down to everything being okay by a bunch of grown men in tights tackling each other. A number of the Washington football fans in Washington, D.C. are black. And so creating something that gives context to why the word redskin is so problematic and using these other racial sources to help that along um, becomes an actually pretty important tool to give context and so uh, stickers and posters have been all over DC for the last six years on this issue. Um, the most recent piece I've done is called Invisible Loss Movement. This piece is almost entirely based on metaphor, but it's also based on space. It's based on existing in spaces that are not as, um, not as obvious. Using traditional regalia that's used uh, in powwows and other places and um, stripped all the color out of them. Everything's black, the bead works black, the leather works black, the ribbon works black, um, and we dance. This is my daughter, Sage, my eldest daughter, in a jingle dress, and I'm in a men's northern traditional. And so it's not about some traditional ceremony, it's about being informed by the spaces that I have occupied throughout my life, and it's not about whether or not I'm dancing right or if I'm um, dressed correctly, but instead it's about the uh, aesthetic value of this as a viable piece of art.